So, good morning everyone from the boss, also called Sertochen boss. That would be the official name. We are in the capital of the province of North Brabant, in Dutch North Brabant, which is, yeah, the capital that we are doing after our last province capital in Limburg, which was Maastricht. Yeah, um, so we are gonna explore the boss, what it has to offer. The name of the place literally means the forest of the Duke, Hertogen Bos, and um, it's, as I understood from what we researched, it's a very historical city like it has many many years of history and centuries it's quite old um, there's a there's an interesting church a beautiful church quite big uh, was it the St. Jan's Kirk yeah yeah St. John's Cathedral it's a uh, similar to Limburg in that there are many Catholics so um, yeah it's different from the rest of the Netherlands and another thing is that because of that contrast with the rest of the Netherlands in terms of religion it was oppressed for some time um, after the war of independence because the government was protestant and they were catholic so there was always there were always fights and problems and now they might get along i guess so yeah this is where we parked it's a residential area just outside of the center of uh, Dembos. It's a 20 minute walk to the cathedral, 17 minutes, so it's quite close. And it's, uh, the advantage is that today, which is Saturday, sometimes it counts as a work day here. And then you need to pay quite a lot for parking, I think like four euros per hour. Uh, in the center itself it's not allowed to park but um, just outside the center you would need to pay four euros per hour but there are some streets that have this sign that you don't pay so for example this street that street on the other hand if it's a blue sign then you do need to go to one of those machines and pay. So these were part of the walls of the city. They are in the shape of a star, like you can see in many medieval cities that they have a star-shaped wall. Dembos was uh, known for yeah, its defense from the at the 80-year war uh, against Spain, Spain. And uh, they could defend very well because they are surrounded by swamps so they could use that as an asset to try to defend from the invaders so there you can see the wall of a part of a star of the yeah of the medieval city and then next to it you see a stream a river uh, yeah which held off everyone except for citizens and traders who came in peace 
and then you needed to come through one of the gates because uh, you cannot just swim and climb the wall so during the second world war or at the end of it rather uh, which is quite a while after the war with Spain they like the allies in operation market garden as we saw when we visited Arnhem they liberated Nijmegen, Arnhem and other cities but Den Bosch they left it for later so Den Bosch was liberated not in the summer but rather later in October I believe yeah so yeah it was German for just a couple more months than the other places this is part of the old wall I mean you can see this type of stone this type of brick is newer like cleaner so it was built later as a renovation and this looking muffy and old and a bit scruffy is yeah the old wall like the original building the original bricks you can also walk through here. Go the gate of Judah. So what we just saw was the second wall, the newer wall, and this is like the oldest wall of the city that takes you to the city center. So this is the St. John's Cathedral St. John, right? Yeah, St. John's Cathedral in Den Bosch The Netherlands only has seven cathedrals and this is the biggest cathedral of the Netherlands in Den Bosch So you can see typical Gothic style with some uh, yeah more humble features like the tower over there and we are coming to the finish line the end of our vlog thanks for watching and that's a joke it's just because there's a kind of marathon here today the boss is a city a place that has many activities festivals so if you want to have fun you're bored and uh, lie on the couch you can come to the boss and uh, run a little afterwards go to the uh, festival of petang or whatever so yeah there are many things to do and yeah we are going into the cathedral because it's open at 8 this cathedral by the way these banners say that it's 800 years old so it's definitely older than Joe Biden so you can see the uh, tower it's in a different color in a different type of brick I guess that's because it was bombed during the war and then they had to rebuild it in another brick, another style uh, than the rest of the cathedral. This is the front where the tower is and the entrance. So apparently we caught a service, a church service <laughs> uh, but yeah I'll try to explain a bit about the church about the architecture it's one nave with five ales and then it has a transept over there 
there are more transepts under the apps let's see under the apps over there um, and the church is not in the form of a latin cross uh, it's quite white but it doesn't form a cross it's more condensed And over there is the apps. This chapel here is called the Chapel of the Icons. It has paintings from orthodox artists, I guess as a sign of solidarity with other Christians from other denominations. It's a pity we wanted to check out the apps and the transept but uh, unfortunately the church service kept going on and on and we didn't have the opportunity the possibility to to check it out but maybe later we might go inside later uh, there is also a very like the church the cathedral is famous because of the statue of Mary that they have it's called the Mary the sweet and dear one uh, which was a reason big enough to become a pilgrimage uh, site for like in the past and we wanted to film that statue of Mary uh, but unfortunately because of the church service we couldn't so this building here with a swan on top is the building of a sect the swan siblings or the swan brothers yeah and uh, part of the royal family so the king Willem Alexander and, and the former queen Beatrix the former queen Be Beatrix were or are part of this uh, sect So this is the San Geronimus Basilica. The architect was inspired by the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, or in the past it was Constantinople from the Roman Empire. That's why, I guess you can't see it, but there's a dome on top, as a kind of cupola. Uh, and architectonically wise, I cannot really classify it as anything that I know. I wouldn't say it's Romanesque, I wouldn't say it's Gothic. So this is the art exposition that is here in the church uh, of the artist Geronimus, Geronimus Bosch. That's why the church is called the Geronimus Basilica because it's uh, dedicated to that artist. The prices are 10 euros or 375 if you are a student and the museum card is not valid. So on this statue that we can see here is inspired by one of the paintings of Geronimus Bosch. Here is another church in the Gothic style. It's quite narrow. I think it's not so significant, but correct correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, but uh, it looks as if it's not very important. I do not even know the name. So on the other church that we saw, which was uh, the one dedicated to Geronimus Bosch, it's we, like my wife researched it and we found out that it's in the Byzantine style which is a very interesting style uh, it's difficult to 
detect and uh, yeah it's typical for its dome structures and uh, I guess irregular shapes so now we are gonna try to get back into the church and film the things that we couldn't film before because of the church service as you can see this is the big transept that crosses with the main nave over there and there you have the other four ales and on that side you have the apse and that's the crossing over there and this is the statue of Mary that made this church become a pilgrimage site in the past and it might still be a pilgrimage site for many Catholics the all-seeing eye and that's a continuation of the main nave through the apse kind of closing in until it forms a round shape at the end you can see this is the apse we're gonna enter it There are some chapels over here, some small shrines, for example, a Pope here that you can pray to. Well, uh, this is a bigger representation of the church. You can see it's like, a, I don't know, I would say it looks like a French cathedral in terms of shape as you can see it's very ornamented very decorated it has 600 statues on the outside and that's the organ of the church it's very big now we are going to the market which is, uh, yeah, straight from the cathedral, uh, from, from the church of St. John. You just go straight and you will find the market. Okay, and this is the market. The market square has a well in the middle with a kind of roof. Uh, it counts as an attraction apparently so this is the well over here statue of mary with the child This is the well. I'll be careful not to throw the phone. It's quite deep. And this is the town hall of the boss. But it looks as if it's closed. By the way, it's next to the market. Paragus at 2 euros for kilo. That's very cheap. And uh, yeah, I guess the market is a place where you can get fresh produce for a very fair price even in the Netherlands this is the oldest residential home of the Netherlands and now it serves as a tourist office of Den Bosch we noticed that there are very nice people here they are very friendly they smile at you, talk to you, explain you a bit about the city. There was a man who was uh, yeah, confirming that the building that we were filming is indeed the oldest residential building of the Netherlands. He was saying, yeah, there are very big bricks in the, uh, in the basement. And uh, yeah, people just stop to talk to you and they greet you. They smile at you it's a very nice atmosphere here 
This is the library of Dembos. Looks like a classical building. So we came to the library because it has a toilet and apparently it's free. So perfect. It's just great because we didn't want to sit down at a cafe and drink or eat something because we are not really thirsty. Morgen. Dit zijn alle uh, foto's over de bos uh -huh. in de binnenstad. Die zijn gratis. Dat is in de omgeving van de bos ook gratis. En daar hebben we wat wandelingen en fietstochten. Die zijn ja. Oké, okay. bedankt. Als u wat vragen heeft, dan hoor ik het graag. Ja, dankjewel. Ja, in the end it, it is turning into a nightmare to look for a place to have lunch here. Um, that is cheap and looks good. We looked at one place, um, but they only had bread, which is bad for someone who is gluten intolerant. And uh, another place, it looked quite good on the internet. Um, it also had a lunch menu, but then they said, no, we do not serve um, lunch anymore, it's only takeaway. So, yeah, we need to find a place where we can sit down, rest, and charge the phone. So, this is the lunch menu at a kind of Spanish style restaurant. It's uh, mini breads, a soup, salads. This is our lunch today. Uh, very generous Spanish portions, as you can see. This is my hand. Yeah, we will eat that. And hopefully not feel hungry afterwards. And uh, then we keep exploring and uh, we'll try to eat uh, Bosse Bolen, which is a dessert from this region. So that lunch was quite disappointing. Um, it had nothing in s of Spanish in it. Um, just the name. And it was 10 euros for those two snacks. And uh, since my wife is still hungry, we got some fries for 350 at one of these uh, stands here at the market. They are definitely very good, very tasty, crispy and uh, yeah, they have a very nice texture. So if you want good fries, Flemish fries are one of the best ones in the world. So we are here at yeah, the original bakery that serves uh, arguably the best uh, bosse bollen. Hello. Hello. Yeah, twee bosse bollen and een latte macchiato. Yeah. <laughs> that was it? Yeah. 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 Um, so it has arguably the best bosse bollen, which are chocolate balls uh, filled with cream and I guess with some kind of dough as well. It has been a bakery for three generations. Uh, first owned by Jan, then by the son Jan, and then by the grandchild Jan. And this is uh, Jan de Groot. Bossebol and Jan de Groot. And as you can see the prices, they are quite okay for cafes here. So the Bossebol costs 3 euro 5. And then you also have all their pastries. So this is how they look. They are quite big. And I also got a latte macchiato with it. In total it's uh, 9 euros and 5 cents. 
We have those bossa bolan. They were tasty, though a bit too sweet for our taste. And um, yeah, now we're going back to the car. It's three o'clock, and we're gonna drive to a concentration camp outside of the uh, Bos, which uh, was turned into a museum. So we're gonna check out how inhumane conditions were during the Second World War and uh, yeah after that there's not much more time left it closes at 5 p.m. so after that we're gonna just uh, drive back home I mean it's uh, a very good deal I mean 2250 for lunch a snack and uh, kind of dessert with a coffee uh, and those two museums that we visited now we're gonna visit a third museum so I would say it's a very good deal um, for for 2250 yeah how did you find uh, North Brabant the uh, boss for me it was a quite a pleasant surprise uh, I mean the people here I didn't expect them to be so open and so friendly compared to uh, people in Limburg that are a bit more closed off yeah I found them very hospitable kind uh, the atmosphere was very nice and easy going and enough things to see yeah I agree so I think Den Bosch is an underrated place uh, North Brabant itself the province so if you want to have good holidays that are not very touristy and if you want to have the local experience I think uh, that this is a good choice <laughs> 